The National History Day project is a project-based learning experience that engages students in the process of historical inquiry. The projects happen as uh, part of the curriculum throughout the year uh, over the course of maybe a few weeks or maybe a few months depending upon uh, the location. And then students um, have a school-based competition which leads on to a regional-based competition. So our region is the South Asia region. So students choose their own topics. They can work by themselves or work in small groups. They research using primary and secondary sources, historical documents, and then they communicate their findings in one of four ways, either a museum-style exhibit, a documentary film, a website, or a live performance. So NHD is really about, even though they call it the History Day Project, it's really a process. And that process starts with selecting your topics and generating all kinds of questions being able to um, find the resources that you need to answer those questions. Um, I try to guide the, the student questioning uh, into different categories of inquiry, which I think is, is helpful. Um, but, uh, but there's really a lot of student choice. There's a lot of student direction and initiative that they show. So when we start the project, we begin with some of the NHD resources that they provide. Another thing that I do at the beginning of the year is uh, give them a survey to see uh, what types of history are of interest to them. The concept of NHD is appealing to students because it gives them a lot of freedom. We got to look at what everyone else in the class had also had chosen and so that really um, gave us inspiration, inspired us to see all the different ideas there were. Another thing that's really useful is, is showing students old projects. Uh, this really gets them excited to see what's possible. We saw previous years and their journey was just really like encouraging and like really wanted, you really wanted to be a part of it. Another way in which we introduced the project, a um, few years back our theme was taking a stand in history. And I gathered about 30 different images from uh, historical moments where people were taking a stand. And uh, we, we use that, the images, these historical images, as a way to uh, really brainstorm on a bunch of different ideas and, and also open up a lot of questions uh, to students. Um, what was the reason for what they were looking at? and uh, why, what, what prompted these uh, historic individuals to uh, take the stand that they did. Another thing that I do at the beginning of the year is uh, give them a survey to see uh, what types of history are of interest to them. There were some categories such as women's history, sci scientific history, and we were especially interested in women's history. And then that paper actually made us think, think about really carefully that which one we wanted to select and what we actually was interested in. We kind of brainstormed many significant things that had happened in history. Um, one of them happened to be the Nobel Prize actually and I thought that was actually, I thought that was quite interesting and I looked more into that and that's what became my project. I definitely think I, I am able to ask questions. I mean now, uh, the more I read into it, the more questions I have. My topic is Buffalo Soldiers and uh, my partner and I really were interested in African American history and the Buffalo Soldiers were the first African American soldiers in the United States military and we wanted a topic that wasn't very known about but had a really big impact on history and so we found the Buffalo Soldiers uh, online and like through this Bob Marley songs. Our topic was between Japanese and Korea's histories conflict so our topic wasn't really clear to research. So actually we had lots of questions first. Then we started solving out those questions through research. Me and my partner chose the Pearl Harbor attack and it was big, a big turning point for World War II, which was what we sort of wanted. We wanted something that uh, a lot of people knew about but didn't know as much about. 
We also, we also thought it was really interesting how the Pearl Harbor attack was a triumph for uh, Japan and then tragedy for America, but it, it, it flipped. It had the opposite effect. Once we've done the research, uh, both the background research for the narrative and the more in-depth research um, where they're doing their analysis and interpretation and evaluation, then we create a rough draft. Um, and uh, so, you know, this is their, their first attempt to, to express some of what they've learned. We run a critique session where we invite teachers and groups of students to work together to review the rough drafts and we, we'll, we'll sit down um, as, a, as a full class and have multiple sessions going at once. And uh, this is a chance for the students to articulate to an audience who knows nothing about their topic, what their topic was about. But then the students will also take a back seat and listen to the teachers and the other students who are talking about their project. What are the things that they see that they really like? And also, what are some of the questions that they have about it? And it's these questions that uh, push the students a little bit further to create a stronger final product. Now it's much easier to ask specific questions about specific things, whereas uh, before we knew, before we started researching, it was just what was the Pearl Harbor, when did it happen, uh, why did it happen, what happened afterwards. We took a lot of the feedback that we got and implemented it, and it was really helpful because before. Our documentary was, had a lot of facts, but they didn't have a lot of concepts. And when we had, we had multiple meetings with teachers, and over time we started, like, uh, started implementing like, concepts to be shown more rather than facts. And so that really helped strengthen our argument. Mr. Gold specifically, he'd ask questions, he'd bring up stuff that he knows, and he'd, he'd try to find faults in my data. And that sort of made me go back and maybe like he'd say something about, have you looked up machine guns? And so I'd be like, okay, what are machine guns? What guns? And so the way he pounded you down, you're kind of like, let me figure out what he was talking about. And then you find an article, and that opens up more articles, and you're like, I have a really big section. This is amazing. And so, that's, that's sort of the way he did it, and it, it really helped, it really helped. Once they've got that research base in place, we move on to project creation. And this is one of the hard things with project-based learning, is uh, realizing how much time it does take. Um, so uh, there are points within um, the last couple of weeks where it's just creation time, and the kids are really trying to work on putting their um, best ideas forward. Um, it's, it's a little bit hard for me at that point as a social studies teacher, because I feel like sometimes I'm not actually teaching history. I'm not actively being the one to, to give the history. Uh, but what's happening during that time is kids are synthesizing. They're taking weeks worth of research um, and practice that they've, that they've done for themselves and putting it into the best format that they can. And there's a lot of thinking that's going on there. Um, they're re refining and revising their work. Uh, they're thinking about the best ways to express it. And, um, so that's, that's really an important part of, of what they get out of the project-based learning experience. It's not just about the history, it's about the process as well. As a history teacher, I know my limits. And um, you know, I, I tend to look at the history and, and the quality of, of um, the research that they've done and the accuracy and uh, historical understanding that they're showing. Um, but 
I have never written my own play before. Um, I have never created my own website before. So I really have to rely upon other teachers to come in and help. And so I work quite extensively with, um, I think last year we had about 15 different teachers involved. Um, all of the English teachers are involved uh, with some of the editing. Uh, we get the um, performing arts teacher to come in and work with our, our plays. So there's really a lot of people involved. Um, throughout the, the planning and creation of these projects. I did a performance with two other girls about Radium Girls. Radium was really popular across the world, and so in the U.S. a couple factories opened, and uh, they hired a bunch of women to work there and paint watch faces with Radium paint, but they all got, like, they didn't know how poisonous it was, so they all got horribly, like, sick and all died. My project was the fall of Singapore. I used a website basically split it up into three different sections. The first section was the, the background context, so what happened before the actual action took place of the fall of Singapore. And the middle one was talking about place during the fall of Singapore. And the last one talked about what happened after the fall of Singapore. So I had a chance to visit with students at, uh, who had been part of the National History Day project. And it was a nice time because it was right after they had done their judging process. So they were a little relaxed. They could take a deep breath and really reflect on the learning experience. And I had seen some of their exhibitions, um, the actual artifacts of learning as well. It was great to hear them talk about um, the whole experience because now they could see it in hindsight from where they began when they were learning really to think in the way historians think. They developed a whole toolkit of how do historians inquire and then they had to find their way to a specific question they wanted to go deeply into. I talked with a lot of students about what was challenging about finding your way to a question you cared enough about to really work with over time. We got to know which one was our weak side of it and which one was our strength and we got to know like which one we should really change a lot and which one we should keep on. I think that the reflection had an impact because after our school competition there is some things that we wrote about in our reflections but weren't able to get to and weren't able to do it in time and I think we had a big vision and it allowed us to really like reach it because the feedback was seen. One of uh, the things that I also wish I had, tr uh, had tried was completely changing the format and maybe trying a documentary or, uh, you know, or an exhibit and seeing how that would affect my project and my learning of it. Uh, it was interesting to hear the personal connections to things like the history of certain photographers who were on, you know, the front lines of war zones or uh, the history of comfort women, um, topics that uh, wouldn't have occurred to me that, that uh, ninth graders might find fascinating enough to really delve into. And then they reflected on the whole experience of, of having to present their ideas in front of judges. It was confirming to me to hear them really value the judges' feedback. They actually really were eager to hear what the judges had to say. They didn't feel um, there might have been a little nervousness about presenting to judges, but they liked that, getting some feedback about all this work that they had put in. I'm a big fan of the project-based learning approach and uh, critique and revision is very much a part of that. And so um, when I think about the project and how I might do it differently, I, um, I would love to, to have students do it a second time. Um, I think they learn so much uh, through when they do it the first time, uh, but to get students, and, and I have had students come back and, and say that they want to do it again. Um, 
that's, that's a great learning experience for them. And uh, I think continuing to improve upon your work, whether it's student work on a project or whether it's my work in teaching, um, I think that continual cycle of improvement is really important. I think the biggest way in which NHD has impacted me as a teacher is that it's really prompted me to think about um, what a historian actually does. Uh, the project is set up in a very authentic way where students are not just studying history but actually doing history. For me it's really been a highlight of my career watching students really grow from the experience uh, not only in terms of learning history and how to think like a historian, uh, but also watching their confidence grow, their creativity, their critical thinking. Um, it's, been a, it's been a real highlight of, of my experience with them. I think the biggest feedback that I would have for other teachers is really just to get started. Um, I've been doing this now for three years and it was a, a great leap of faith when I first got started with it. <music>